In this tutorial, we're going to look at what the JavaScript JSON parse function does and how you can use it to get data from external API data sources. Hi, this is James from Junior Developer Central and welcome to this tutorial on how to use the JavaScript JSON parse function. If you have a second, don't forget to subscribe below to support the channel and to get future updates on tutorials. So let's dive straight in and talk about what the JavaScript JSON parse function actually is and what you would use it for. So first we need to just quickly discuss the difference between JSON and JavaScript objects because they're not actually the same thing. So I've got a string which looks like a JavaScript object in there but it's actually JSON data and the two things that you'll notice, the, the actual object itself if we were going to write it would look something like this. So you'll notice a couple of differences, uh, the first being that the properties of the object and the values themselves don't actually have to be wrapped in double quotes, whereas in the JSON string above they actually do, that's a requirement. And the other thing of course is the object doesn't need to be wrapped in any other types of quotes, whereas the string here we're using a, a template literal, so that anything inside those backticks will be considered as a string. So JavaScript objects are kind of like the building blocks of the program, the code that you're writing. So anything you're interacting with, like the, the window or the, the DOM of the page that you're working on, will all look like these objects and you can actually access their properties, update them and, and call different functions with them. Whereas our JSON data, that's something that gets returned maybe from an external source or loaded in from a file. And it is literally just a string. You can't do anything other than basic string operations with it, which I'll quickly demonstrate now. So with our string that we have here, you might be tempted to say, well, I want to access the data and then maybe the first item in the array and its shopping cart property. But if we save and run that code, you can see we get an error because it is literally a string and we can't access the data property directly. But if we change that to the object that we were comparing to just a second ago, you'll see when we run the code this time, you can see we can access the shopping cart value of ABC123 because it's just like any other JavaScript object that we might have in our code. So now we understand the differences between JSON and JavaScript objects, it should be pretty simple to work out that the json.parse function takes one of these JSON strings and just converts it to an object in JavaScript so that we can use it to access its properties and do different things with it. So wrapping the string function in json.parse just converts it to an object so that we can call all of the properties on it and any functions that might actually be there as well. So for example if I change that to items now, uh, you can see I can just directly access those values that are in that sub array within the object. So if you're writing more plainer JavaScript code without using any frameworks for example, then this is going to be something that you'll be doing all the time, parsing JSON strings from external sources, but some of the other frameworks like React and Angular, you don't really have to worry about it too much because there are already built in functions that handle that for you. I'm going to show you a really common mistake that most new developers uh, you do when working with json.parse, uh, but before we do that let's have a look at some examples of how to actually get this data from a third party data source like an external API for example. So for example I've just created a really basic uh, PHP script which literally just returns back a string and as you can see it's a, a JSON like string, it's got just my name and all uh, some programming languages that might be associated with a particular developer and if you run this script it literally just passes that string back to the place where it was called. So if we go back to our script and I'm going to use jQuery to actually pull uh, that JSON data into the uh, JavaScript code that we're working with and I know jQuery is kind of getting out of favour at the moment but I want to use it for a specific example and I'll show you another in a second using fetch as well. Let's use jQuery for this example. So I'm just going to use jQuery's convenience function of .get and all I need to do is pass in the script name which is .getphp and then when that's done we'll receive some data back and I'm just going to open that up in a function and say console.log data and if we save that and run it you can see we've got the string come back from the PHP code and this might be something a lot more useful from a, a, an actual real API um, but just to prove the example if we wanted to say console.log and data.name for example you'll see when we run the code that we get an undefined value come back because it hasn't been parsed to JSON. So what we could do is something like say const 
parse data is equal to json.parse and then pass in the data. And then if we update this console.log here, when we run the code again, you can see we can now access my name. So really simple example, and it shows the importance of having to parse data that's come from external APIs, especially if you're using uh, these sort of uh, jQuery functions to actually go and get the data. Uh, I'll show you an example with fetch now as well. So you can see the response that we get back from fetch is a little bit different actually than jQuery. We didn't don't actually just get the string come back. We actually get a response object. So if you wanted to at, try and access one of the values in there, so we had my uh, name for example as one of the properties, you can see we get that undefined value back again. And you would have thought that we can just parse this data again and uh, try and present that to the console. So if we wrap our data uh, that's come back from fetch and then try and parse it and get the name property, you'll see we actually get an error. And that's because we're actually trying to parse that whole object uh, that which comes back from data. And we don't actually want to do that because what we're actually trying to pass into json.parse isn't actually a json string, it's actually an object itself. So the way to handle this with fetch is basically to use another function that's available with fetch and I'm just going to, in the promise that gets returned here, um, just say data.json. And this does the job of parsing the J JSON data that we want to access back into a JavaScript object. So if we were to then put another then statement after this and do the same sort of thing again and say console.log data, let's tidy that up. This time when we run the code, you can see it's parsed the whole uh, string that's come back from the PHP script and converted it into a JavaScript object for us, which we can then use within our rest of our code. So if you are using the fetch API to go and get data from external sources, as long as you call data.json at some point in your promise chain, you don't really actually have to worry about calling the real json.parse function to convert your data into an object. So I mentioned before that there's a really common mistake that a lot of new developers that are working with JSON and JSON.parse come across, and that's basically not checking for errors. Uh, and I'll show you what I mean by that. Uh, if we were to actually change the string that gets returned from our PHP script, so if I just remove this square bracket, for example, uh, what we actually have is no longer valid JSON because the brackets don't actually match up. So if we were to leave our JavaScript code as it is, but actually run it again, you can see fetch gives us an error and basically says that what you've sent back from the PHP script, uh, although we try to interpret it as JSON data and parse it, um, it didn't actually work because we've got a missing square bracket. So if you're using fetch, uh, you'll need to actually make sure you've got a catch at the end of this, um, just so that there's any errors like that that kind of come across are actually handled and dealt with accordingly. So if I just say console.log the error there, you can see we're no longer getting an error and we're handling that problem with the JSON data. Uh, ultimately, if we were doing something like this where we had some data that saved into a variable and we could just call our data data object or something and just leave it there. So if our uh, data.json parsing function works okay, then we could set our data object here to equal to the data. And if there's an error, maybe we could say something like data object is equal to a blank object. Or you could trigger something else in your code to, to do something when this error occurs. But just as an example, this would gracefully uh, make sure that data object has always got something in it, should it be required elsewhere in the code. If you are using jQuery or just parsing a, a standard uh, string that's got JSON in it, uh, what you'll need to do is actually use a try catch block. So here we have the same thing that we had with fetch, but now we've got our jQuery code back. And again, this could be just a string that you're trying to parse, but we're using a try catch block. So we try and parse the data from our jQuery response into the parse data variable. But if that does fail, we're just going to assign a blank empty object into that parse data variable. So as with most things with coding, it's always better to be a bit more safer than sorry down the line when something goes bang because you forgot to try catch any errors. So that's it for this tutorial. Hopefully you found it useful. Just before you go, don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more tutorials and updates, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.